What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Piquel. Today on The Hard Count, we're going to break down Baylor's new wide zone offense and how it's going to benefit them this upcoming season. It is no secret that last season, Baylor's offense was abysmal. They had no identity. They were last in the conference in rushing with 90 yards a game, and they were 100th out of 130 teams in terms of scoring. That's really bad. Now, enter Eric Mateos, enter Jeff Grimes, and I believe this offense has a whole new outlook on what it's going to mean for this upcoming season. The wide zone scheme is going to benefit Baylor in a lot of ways. Namely, it's going to be able to play to their strengths and hide their weaknesses and also allow for their quarterback to make a lot quicker, more decisive, easier decisions as a whole and just slow the game down for whoever's playing quarterback back there. Now, to speak to that first point, Baylor's offensive line, they're not great, okay? I know you made some acquisitions with Grant Miller and Jacob Gall, but you still aren't 100% sure what you're going to have with that group. But the great news is for Baylor, you don't have to be Wisconsin. You don't have to be Iowa. You don't have to seek out pancake blocks. Those are nice. Those are always welcomed. But for this offense to work, that's not required. To break it down a little more, the most important block in this offense, in the wide zone run play, is capturing the end man on the line of scrimmage with the tackle. Now, what he's trying to do in this scheme is get his outside shoulder so whoever's playing running back can get around him, can get outside, and get downhill in a hurry. Now, if that end man on the line of scrimmage, that defensive end, that walked up linebacker, whoever it is, if he wants to overcommit, that's fine. We'll jump underneath him. If he wants to try and play outside and keep that tackle from getting his outside shoulder, that's fine. Trust Nebert will cut up underneath you for three yards. We'll live with that every single play. Now, what this, what this offense is going to do, what the defense is going to be forced to do is run sideline to sideline because after a while, you get tired of seeing your linebacker get blocked in by that tight end, by that slot receiver. You get tired of trying to get beat to the sideline. So what do you start doing as a defense? You start cheating. You start shifting a little more to that side, to that strength side. You start taking a step or two pre-snap to try and get a head start on the wide zone that you think is coming. And that's why we saw Jeff Grimes in the spring game use so many misdirections, use so much motion offense, because there are so many counters off of this offense. And that's why I think it's going to benefit the quarterback. One, there's a whole lot of counters. If you want to go ahead and try and sneak up with your safety, that's fine. We'll do the RPO scheme. We'll pull it. And guess what? Tyquan Thornton's already in the end zone. If you want to have that linebacker shift over and try to beat us down to the corner, that's fine. We got RJ Sneed on the slant coming right behind your ear, pal. Okay, so there's a lot of things that's going to be able to be more digestible for the quarterback. He's not going to have to see the entire field. He's going to have to read one or two guys, and they're already going to be committing to that run, which brings us to the next point. It's going to be easier for the quarterback because the run is built to set up the pass here which we didn't see at all a season ago. Charlie Brewer was running for his life, yes, but he was also throwing the ball 50 times or so a game. And if it wasn't 50, it was at least 40, okay? Charlie Brewer was on an island because the defense was expecting him to throw the football just about every play because there was no threat to run. For the quarterback for this upcoming offense, he's going to have it kind of on a platter because the defense can be worried about that wide zone, okay? Everything is predicated off that wide zone. So when the defense creeps up, the reads become a whole lot clearer, okay? So it's not going to be drop back, huck it 40 times a game. The quarterback's going to have a lot more help around him. And I believe Zach Wilson in this offense a year ago for BYU really overachieved. You don't need Zach Wilson to make this offense be successful. Whoever's playing quarterback back there will have to make quick reads, decisive reads, and hand the ball off. So whoever you like back there, I don't think it's as crucial as a lot of people think. The playmakers are what's going to make this offense go, and it's going to address a lot of what I think the offensive line doesn't have just yet. So, in summary, we like the wide zone offense because it keeps the defense guessing, it keeps them on their heels, and it allows Baylor to be more effective in how they want to scheme it up personnel-wise, allows the offensive line to have a little bit less of a large ask, if you will. They get to kind of play a little more reactionary to that defense and then the quarterback position should be a lot more clean in terms of what you're asking him to do the read should be a lot easier and he should be less keyed on in terms of what they do in a balanced offensive attack that's it for here today on the hard count go ahead and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with everything going on here it's going to be a whole lot of fun we're going to keep this party rolling and we will see y'all next time